Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings, saints. In the name of Jesus, I hope you are well. I hope you are blessed. And I hope that you are keeping warm. It's a little bit chilly. At least chilly in South Africa. Um, those who are outside of South Africa, please do let us know how the weather is, where you are, and if you are experiencing the same cold front that we are experiencing. Uh, it's, it's actually even colder inside the houses and outside is even warmer. Well, if you don't put any, any heaters or anything. But be greeted. It's Pastor X again. And um, I'm here to share a word with you um, in the book of X, chapter 3. We... We labored on this yesterday, and I think technology got the best of us. And I thought, let me do a pre-recording instead of doing it live. And um, I'm going to be very brief. So you can either download this and watch it and listen to it later, or you can just literally take 15 minutes of your time and I will be, I will be done. Now we're going to read... A, a, a book written by Luke, and uh, in Acts chapter 3, we're going to read um, the 10 verses, first 10 verses of that chapter, and let's unpack that and uh, get some few things out of that. Now it says, Peter heals the crippled beggar. Verse 1, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg. From those going into the temple courts, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Verse 9, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, 
They recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Father, let it be planted inside our spirits. Let our ears, minds, and souls be receptive of it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, saints, there's something that I want us to really pick out of these um, verses here. And I'm going to go verse by verse so that we can be able to get a clear picture. Now, it says one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Okay. Now, this is the time of prayer, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, if you look, you read chapter 2. You will understand that in chapter 2, what just happened there is that the, the Holy Spirit came down when the disciples were gathered. And because of the joy, the excitement, this new experience, they, they, they started selling some of their possessions, including houses, because they were spending a lot of time in church. And they will be spending a lot of time traveling, spreading the gospel. And um, that is why you would see that 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they were going to church. Now, it's not saying that the church was starting at 3 o'clock. But 3 o'clock, there was another prayer. So there could have been another prayer at 12 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, and so forth. So now, they're going to church they're going to the temple because of the time of prayer and someone in the midst of that the verse 2 says now a man crippled from birth so meaning that this man has never walked in his entire life has never walked and probably people were asking questions why he can't walk what did he do what didn't he do was it his mother that was wrong? Uh, was it his father that was being punished out of this? At some point, Jesus was asked the same question. Who is at fault by this person being disabled? And Jesus said, no one is at fault. This has happened so that the power of God may be revealed and manifest. So now verse 2 says, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called beautiful. Now, sometimes people would make what is bad and what you need a solution for, they will glamorize it and find ways to make it look good. So this man is crippled from birth, but they put him at the beautiful gate. The name of the gate is called beautiful. Whether it was beautiful because of what happened, to the guy, what was happening. But let's assume that it was beautiful because, uh, let's take it as a VIP entrance. This was a beautiful gate because it was beautiful and perhaps rich people were using that. People who were in leadership were using that. That's why even Peter and John perhaps were using that gate to see this man. So he, he was put at that particular gate. But now here's the thing. Everyone else, even the people that are bringing him, they're going inside. But they leave this man by the gate so that he can be able to beg. He can be able to ask people who are going into the church for donations. All right? So, 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 so that they can give, them, well, give him whatever that they have. So now, this is what is happening. This man is here. Peter is here. And I want to say to you, you might have been experiencing things even from birth. You might have been going through things even for years. You might have been feeling certain things for years and maybe for months, for days. But I want to say to you that you might even be sitting at a point where you are starting to be comfortable now with this. This man was being carried day in, day out, every single day. 
He was being carried there. This was part of his life now. This was his hustle. He knew nothing else except for this. Probably he even had a manager, someone who was managing his affairs, this money that he will collect and so forth. Because why? This man is crippled. And while life is happening, he had to sit by that gate just because it's called beautiful and he had to sit there and you might be in that situation like this man there are things that are just not moving things that are not happening in your life things are not happening the way you had planned probably you had planned with by this year when you will be married by this year when you will be having two cars by this year you'll be having a house you'll be having this business and nothing is happening but everyone else looking at you they might be able to say wow things are happening life is happening because why you are sitting at the beautiful gate everyone looks at this man and they probably glamorize him with this gate that he is using that he's sitting at now this is what is happening now verse 4 peter and john are approaching and this man has an expectation all right it's it's no different to anything else peter and john are coming and he sees them as potential donors as people that can give him something that he needs for today and maybe for tomorrow because that's what that's why he was coming every day because that was sustaining him just for that day and probably just for two days, depending on how much he would have made from that. Now, Peter looked straight at this man because he asked for, for money. Peter looked straight at this man and said, look at us. Sometimes we need to change our focus. This man was probably asking because he's used to others giving him something. Others will just promise, I'll give you tomorrow. Others will just pass without giving. Like, he, he was not even paying attention. He's like, can I have? And then he's looking elsewhere. He's looking for the next target. He's looking for somebody else that can be able to do something for him. And Peter says, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something. So from time to time, when people engage him, he knows Uguti, either they will be asking him questions. Why are you here? How long have you been here? What happened to you? And all that. Or else they will talk to you because they want to give you something. It was the same case here. They wanted to give him something. But it was not the same thing that he expects. Because Peter says in verse 6, silver or gold... I do not have. Now, at this point, I'm sure this man is so irritated, thinking, you know what? The, probably he was not even interested to hear any further. He's thinking, you're wasting my time here because other people will be passing, thinking that I'm sorted. You know, some of us, we, we, we feel, Uguti, when we hear an opportunity, we get an opportunity to hear the word of God. We think it's a waste of time because we are so busy with life. We want things happening. We're hustling. We want to go to a to, to work to make sure that you bring something forth. You, we have no time to pay attention to something that is not going to give us what we want. This man at this point in time is probably thinking, why did I even waste my time? I should have focused. Somebody else might be passing here thinking that I'm sorted. And he probably was thinking, you know what, if these people are engaging me, they will sort me out for a very long time. And then they're saying, silver or gold, I don't have. Silver or gold, I don't have. Right now, you, God might not answer you. God might not answer you by giving you what you want when, now. Probably you need money, and God might not give you money. Probably you want a happy marriage, and God might not give you a happy marriage. Probably you want good health, and God might not give you good health. But God will look beyond and say, beyond money, what is it that you really need? Beyond this marriage, what is it that you really need? Beyond this health, what is it that you really need? That will sustain you, that will keep you for a long time than what the duration of what when you want now will be.
And he says, but what I have, that was now the turning point. He says, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but I still have something for you. God might say, I don't have the car that you want. I don't have the job that you want, but what I have for you is peace. What I have for you, it's a reason to rejoice. What I have for you, it's a reason for you to be happy in your life. I'm here to give you something that would last more than the silver and the gold that I'll give you. I'm here to give you something that will answer a lot of your questions, that will answer a lot of your prayers in one instant, instead of me just giving you the fish. And God is saying, I'm going to give you a fishing rod. You might not catch something. Yes, you are hungry now. You want to, 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 to fulfill that desire and the edge that you have now to eat something because you're starving. But God is saying, listen, let me rather give you a fishing net. Let me rather give you a fishing rod. And then you can go and fish so that even tomorrow when you're hungry, you can still go and get more fish. He says, silver and gold I don't have. He says, in the name of Jesus, this is what I have. And what I have, I'm giving to you. And God is saying today, I want to give you peace. But you need to pay attention to me. You need to start closing your eyes to everything else that is around you and pay focus your attention on me. He says, look at us. And this man gave them his attention. God wants you to give him your attention. God wants you to, yes, understand, you still don't have legs. You're still sitting there as a beggar. But your breakthrough is in you, blocking everything else and pay attention to him. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He didn't say a lot of things. He said, this is the need that you have. The walking is the problem. Money is not the problem for you. The walking is the problem. Because the more you don't walk, is the more you will find yourself humiliated. They will find yourself begging. You will find yourself doing all these things, having these expectations. Sometimes they are met, sometimes they are not met. But God is saying, get up and walk. You've been dwelling so much in that situation. You've been crying tears. They even dry now. Nothing comes out because you've been sitting in that situation for a long time. And God is saying, walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Whatever situation that you are going through, I don't know what you are going through right now, but I know I'm speaking to somebody. Uguti, whatever situation that you find uncomfortable, whatever situation that brings discomfort in your life, whatever situation that brings about fear over your life, whatever situation that makes you not to progress, I declare this morning i'm saying you shall walk you shall get out of that situation and you shall get out and you shall be strong when you read the bible says and then he reached out to him just to help him to get up because probably his faith was not strong enough to even believe that okay my feet are, are, are now functioning and then he pulls him with his right hand and this man goes into the worship. It shows you that this person has been eager. But sometimes we block the people of God by limiting them. We just put them by the gate. Put them by the gate. We're limiting people of God from experiencing God. And I hope that you're not going to be the beautiful gate. You're not going to be that glamorous person, that glamorous pastor, that glamorous usher, or that glamorous worshiper that is hindering other people from seeing God. This man was hindered by his legs. But at the same time, these people, they could have carried him into the church. Sometimes they even called him probably by his disability, the beggar. He, that's what they called him, a beggar, a cripple. And God is saying, today, I want you to have a new name. I want to remove that name that keeps you down. I want to remove that name that makes you 
to feel Uguti, all that you are good for is to beg and to receive. This man went into the temple. And when God has blessed you, you will be like this man. People will start questioning and say, man, doesn't that look like Tolani who used to do this and this? Doesn't this, when God is done with you, but all he needs, he needs you to get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This morning, I want to declare that whatever situation that has kept you down, whatever situation that has made you to be comfortable, to settle for what God hasn't intended for you, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I break any chain that is holding you down. And I'm saying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk and you shall walk because you are blessed. You shall walk because you have a God who is above everything else. Yes, things might have turned out. God will not ask you how it came about. He takes no pleasure in your tears. He takes no pleasure in your suffering. He takes no pleasure in you making all these mistakes that you are making. But what he wants, he wants to give you another chance. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace can reach even at the furthest of places where you think that he cannot pull you out of. God will pull you out. However, he wants you to pay attention to him. Give all your attention to him so that you can hear him when he says, get up and walk and you shall walk. Today, you are listening to this message. And after listening to this message, if you believe, your situation is going to change. Your situation is going to be different. You're not going to be the same. People are going to look at you and say, isn't this the same person? Isn't this the same person who was doing ABC? Isn't this the same person we thought Uguti everything is done, Ngaye? They thought Uguti, no, Upelile, everything is done. They're just waiting for that announcement to say, Uguti, we're burying him or we're burying her next week. They're waiting for that notice that says he's been fired. They're waiting for that notice that says she is divorcing. And God is saying, no, not now, not at their watch, not while I'm in control. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship that makes us to be even closer to God, to keep us in his presence until Christ comes. God bless you, and you have a wonderful and a wonderful day ahead. And please do share this message it might not be for you now. Probably you are inside the church. You are not at the gate. But somebody else is sitting at the gate and is waiting to hear this message so that they can be able to get up and walk and they start rejoicing again. God bless you.